Welcome and aloha. I'm Mark Shklov, the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. Today, we're going to go across the sea of dreams to talk with Kelsey Jandok. Kelsey, who goes by her initials, KJ, has focused her personal and professional lives on helping others. KJ has founded and or participated in several ventures aimed at inspiring other people, especially minorities and those who do not have access to entrepreneurial advice so that they can maximize their potential. KJ has also sought to maximize her own potential and went back to law school to become a lawyer and intends to use those legal skills to assist dreamers become doers and bring positive change to the world. Aloha, KJ, welcome. Good to see you. How are you? Good to see you, Mr. Shklov. Thank you so much for this honor and opportunity. I can't tell you how much I haven't stopped smiling genuinely for this long, just knowing that I would have this opportunity to not only speak with you personally, but to you know shed light about the things that I think are very meaningful to me and you know going to law school during this um, crazy time that I never anticipated. You know. Well, well, yeah, let's get right into it. You talk a lot about dreamers and doers, mm -hmm. and I want you to tell us what's a dreamer, what's a doer, and, you know, can someone be both a dreamer and a doer? Explain that. What, what are you talking about? Yeah, so dreamers have very powerful thoughts, and now the difference with between between being a dreamer and a doer, a doer is someone who executes those dreams. They they follow through. Doers are the people who make moves. And you know, for me as a serial entrepreneur and a future lawyer of entrepreneurial endeavors, I just want to see people win and I want to see dreamers become doers. And now you can wear neither hat, you could wear either hat, or you could be both a dreamer and a doer. So um yeah, that's that's basically in short what it means. <laughs> okay. And and yeah, you use those words a lot, and mm -hmm. I, I think that it applies to you. I mean, what, what are you dreaming of doing? I want to kind of give find out where you're going. Right. So what really solidified that that ta that tagline for me you know cage the doer um really started when uh actually before my jd program so i went back to school um after being a flight attendant and entrepreneur for a few years um going to asu law for my master of legal studies degree and while i was there i was fortunate enough to be invited to go to the western regional uh black law student association convention over mlk weekend in january 2019 and while I was there, um, you know, I was I learned about pushing comfort zones, how being different is your advantage and how to stay motivated to keep your path progressive. So I finally celebrated MLK weekend properly. And, you know, I bring this up because, you know, um, I, I'm 35 right now in my 3L year and um, some would say that being a yes man may have created certain hindrances in my life that I'm only in law school now, but really, I don't think that at all. It fostered all of the trust, the process, experiences, and the meaningful conversations that most people from Hawaii would never even know existed. And that's what led me to realize that my most important skill is the want to learn you know, and having that being combined with being a person of action, a doer. And, um, that's why I I want to perpetuate that and show people that it's there's it's a two step process. Dream as big as possible, and now let's get that strategic game plan going and cross off that list. Stay persistent and consistent. Yeah. Okay. Well. All right. Let Let me ask you what what have what have you been doing? Mm -hmm. In the so meantime. Far? Yeah. Okay, so uh, while being at law school, I sat on two different boards. I was um, the communications director for the uh, Bolsa Association. And then my 1L year, I sat on the executive board for the Entertainment and Sports Law Association. Um, and then I was uh, our president last year. Um, I'm a part of APILSA, the IP Law Society. Um, I started a podcast um, during right before 2L Year started called Too Legit Podcast. And it's a podcast for non-traditional law students by non-traditional law students. My co-host is actually um, a, a former travel nurse. She is first generation Nigerian from uh, Houston, um, Anoedo. 
And um, and then I also started during the pandemic, another startup called Not Water. And it is a, uh, a label that uh, is minority owned and collaborates with other minority owned startups in an effort to not only um, create limited edition small batch products for alcohol, but also to help minority owned startups in general, just from start to finish, from inception, business plan, all the way through even exit strategy sometimes. So that's the main things that I've been working on. And I have my sights set for but like a 15 year game plan for uh, myself and Hawaii uh, with what I want to do right now, uh, post-grad and uh, my big long-term goals. So. Okay, yeah. you, you, you talked a lot about uh, Martin Luther King and that experience uh, in law school and mm -hmm. about forming these other uh, companies that uh, are, are helping uh, different people, but I, I want to dive a little bit deeper. I want to, I want to, you know, why are you doing this? I mean, what motivated you to, to dream and become a doer and, and an activist like this? I mean, what, what got you going? And, and you, you know, you had, you, you said you had a career as a flight attendant for Hawaiian airlines. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I would think that'd be a nice job. And you yeah. also, you know, had, were an entrepreneur. Yeah. But, why do this? What is, what is motivating you? Well, there, there were so many things, um, you know, uh, it probably started back in sixth grade when I made a promise to myself that I would be an attorney one day. And so, you know, at the end of the day, all we have is our words. So I, I, want to, I wanted to fulfill that promise to myself. I also felt um, while I was a flight attendant that I was underutilizing my education that I was afforded from Punahou and from UCLA. So I really wanted to put that to use. And then, um, you know, after learning so much from my first startup, which was a bikini label called KJ Kini's, I, be I became like obsessed with um, intellectual property and uh, specifically copyrights and trademarks and how that could help brand strategy for other entrepreneurs. So that's kind of where it all took off. And then, um, uh, you know, while I was a flight attendant, you know, um, I was going to start no matter what fall 2019. But, you know, uh, I was 31, single, no kids at the time. And my mom is a former flight attendant as well. So she told me, you know what, your brain's on like 70% dead. So maybe you need to go back a year early. So that's what I did. So I went back instead in August 2018 to go to school and do my MLS. And I got to say, that was hands down the best decision I made because it, you know, prepared me very well for my 1L year and I was able, you know, to make the decision to go to Seattle U um, after having done my uh, MLS program because I saw that Seattle U was a school that really uh, prides itself on social justice and um, having conversations that are very uncomfortable for people that, that we personally, I think, need to hear in Hawaii. So I'm trying to take everything that I've learned from there and apply it to uh, Hawaii and help further what we're trying to do with education and the economy and sports and entertainment. Okay, I, I want to go back to a couple of things you mentioned. You, you <laughs> talked about, well, one, you know, wanting to be a lawyer since sixth grade and yeah. deciding that you're going to go to law school. And you talked about uh, MLS. And mm -hmm. I, I, I want to ask you several questions. Um, yes. I mean, wh why go to law school? I mean, what, why, how will becoming a lawyer help you realize your dreams? And become a doer, and then and then explain what MLS means. So I, there's a there's a couple questions I throw at you. I'll, I'll say. Oh yeah. Okay, so my MLS degree is the Master of Legal Studies. And so I have that um, in order to become an attorney, you have to be uh, qualified to sit for the bar exam. So that means I needed my JD and not my MLS. And then, um, you know, the MPRE, that's the only way that you can become a licensed attorney in most states. So that's why JD as well. So the MLS was more so supplemental and I was able to um, take other classes that I haven't taken during uh, my JD. JD process. Um, and what, what was your other question? Well, aside from why, why, why become oh, why law school? Yeah, why become a law, lawyer? Yeah. Why, why not just move on when well, you had your MLS? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
you know, I, I want to say that uh, it, it stems from you know, when you are a certain type of entrepreneur that I am, I think on a very crazy grand scale. And uh, to some, it might even seem like delusional optimism. So in order to back up the thoughts and the processes and the plans that I have, the best thing to do is to establish that credibility with your education. So I knew that a JD would serve that purpose. And if I want to make systemic changes, I need to learn the law. I need to learn how to make those changes, the way to go about it, what the loopholes are, who to talk to, who are in these positions of power. In order to really affect change down the line, we need to understand how the law operates because the law can dictate business, which can dictate our economy and other things. So that's why I pick law specifically. The law gives you the strength is, is in the backup. It, the strength and the credibility, the leverage, you know, uh, like, like, like Nelson Mandela said something along the lines of, you know, education is the weapon with which to use to change the world. And I, I believe that too. So for me, it's all, it's all um, footed in education. Okay. So mm -hmm. we talked kind of generally about issues, but I want you to focus. I want to ask you now, what are the biggest current social and legal issues for you and other millennials and that are, you know, the future. <laughs> Yeah, you know, there, there are just so many issues in general, there will always be issues, but I think at the forefront right now is um, dealing with reality, you know, the, the pandemic um, uh, hit a lot of people differently. So um, there's all these things in social media. So we're differentiating between what is fact and what is opinion a lot and keeping up with the Joneses and then um, uh, prioritizing real goals. You know, and I think that's what's hard with uh, the social issues right now is that we see things on media that aren't necessarily true. And we're aiming for things that aren't necessarily uh, uh, moving towards happiness and creating a better society. So, um, and then, and legally it's, it's uh, I, I think now is the golden opportunity. I think about it like heartbreak, you know, um, heartbreak is a golden opportunity to, to see, see something that's going on, take the time to realize uh, that it is actually happening, open your mind, be curious, learn, and make a game plan of how you're gonna try to make it better. So. Okay, well, yeah. how are you gonna help dreamers become doers? How are you going to help them when, you, when you're about to get your mm -hmm. law degree and you're about to become a lawyer? Yeah. Uh, how do, how do you help a dreamer become a doer? Well, on, on the small level, I guess, which I still think is very um, important is helping individual people. So what I do for my cage the doer stuff, aside from um, assisting people with their startups and startup consulting, I take on a, a mentee. So once every five years, I mentor someone uh, 18 years and older because I don't want to deal with parents, you know, and um, and I take them under my wing. And I, the first thing I ask them is, what is your biggest dream? What is your biggest dream? That it's gotta be something that you don't admit to yourself, that you don't say out loud, that you think feels silly. And that's the dream that I wanna work with. And then when I can help you come up with a game plan, teach you basic fundamental skills of using a planner, uh, timeliness, appearance, um, saying thank you, being present, making good eye contact, and then linking you up with someone that could further help you in your field. So for example, right now, I'm working with, um, my, my mentee is uh, Jarek Robinson, and I met him as he was a, a he was working valet at uh, one of a one of the hotels. And um, I found out that he wanted to be, you know, in the real estate realm and he's 19 years old. So I actually hooked him up with one of my good friends and classmates who also operates on a fourth quarter mentality and a pay it forward, uh, uh, you know, system, uh, Chris Tasaka, because he's doing so well in real estate. And he was the perfect person to help me mentor Jarek in that direction. So on an individual level, that's what I want to do because I know that when you can make one person feel more fulfilled, then we can create a happier society. And when people are a little bit happier, they start to treat people nicer. And then that affects positive change. But aside from that, um, one of my 
biggest objectives is to be an uh, adjunct professor at UH. This is what I'm hoping for um, in the short term after graduation. I want to be able to teach um, entrepreneurship law and strategy in that new uh, entrepreneurship program that they have at Scheidler. And then from there, um, I'm hoping to not only uh, teach about entrepreneurship, but what that means for sports too, with the name, image, and likeness, things all changing and um, uh, increase the recruitability of, you know, students and athletes and retain a lot of our talent here, build our UH system, therefore build our economy. And then my, my 15 year game plan is to bring over a pro sports team. And that's where not water kind of links back into it. Um, to, as I'm, I'm preparing a pitch for Netflix to show start to finish how uh, Not Water got to where it was, how it was just a, a registered trademark during the uh, pandemic that ends up helping people and Hawaii's economy at large. So it's kind okay. of my, my outline to that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's a lot to say. <laughs> So I, will, I, I see you, I mean, you're kind of doing two things. You're helping individuals, mm -hmm. uh, mentoring uh, mm -hmm. individuals. That's part of what I hear as a goal for you to help a, a dreamer become a doer. And yes. you're also uh, um, have, have kind of a general community uh, uh, mm -hmm. picture. You want to help the community also. Right. Um, and, and you also mentioned earlier that you were involved in Martin Luther King. Uh, what what was that about? What what you know? Is there a, is there a bigger picture that involves that also with the community or our individuals? Where where what is that about? Oh, I w I was just bringing up the MLK uh, weekend because for Bolsa for the Western Regional uh, Convention, it's always usually held on MLK weekend. Um, so that's like January. Um, of the year. And uh, that's the only reason why I brought it up. Um, other than that, uh, what was your other question? I'm sorry. Well, where, where, where does, I mean, are, are you an advocate for access to justice or for oh. Black Lives Matter? Or I mean, do those, are those issues that are also concerning you? Oh, definitely. Um, my first, um, my first internship, actually, after one L year, I was working with Access to Justice, and um, I helped them as a tech fellow to create a, a, an app that provided civil legal aid for those in the he uh, hearing impaired community in Washington. So Access to Justice is very near and dear to my heart because I do believe that everybody deserves that. Um, and um, as far as Black Lives Matter, uh, Lives Matters go, I am by no means any um, expert on the topic, but I do believe in learning from communities that come together to um, hold each other accountable, to provide resources, to inform the public, and to let people know that this is actually what's going on, this is an issue, and um, there are ways to help change that and uh, what we can do to move forward. So that's more so of my take. I just wanna be someone who facilitates this um, conversation and lets people know that these conversations do occur. And if we wanna have better hiring practices, better lawyering, more um, macro progression, then we have to have these conversations, definitely. Well, okay, yeah. And let's talk about the community a little bit. I mean, we all know that, um, well, America has some divisions mm -hmm. in it right now. And uh, you talked about helping the community. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, what, how can we bring about positive change and collaboration in the currently heavily divided communities in the United States? What, what, are, what are your plans to address that within our own community and within the United States and maybe within the world? <laughs> well, I feel like just just speaking up about it, you know, having a platform like this to um, just convey my thoughts is already a step in the right direction. You know, I think um, being from Hawaii, we don't think about minorities in the way that those in the mainland do, you know, and um, I think we can help uh, fight the issues that minorities in the mainland are fighting if we actually know what's going on. And, you know, um, just take the legal field. 
uh, for instance, right now, you know, uh, black lawyers only represent 5% of the, of the field. 2% are Asian and 37% are female. And we're, it's my quest to really change that and talk about it. And I do believe that we need more people who, who look like me and other people, you know, other minorities in these positions in order for change to really come about. So um, we just have to have these conversations and we have to keep ourselves informed. We have to stand in solidarity and know which resources are appropriate and talk about things like microaggressions. So, yes. So, so talking, you, you, mm -hmm. you gotta hear, get the word yeah. out. Yeah, I think it starts with being open-minded though. We have to be open-minded, then we have to be willing to listen and have that curiosity to learn. And then, you know, uh, uh, seeking those resources and uh, figuring out what your position is and what your purpose is, and then speaking out about it. And I, I think that's where I'm at right now is that I've learned all these things. I know that things need to be said. I now have a different type of education to give me that credibility. And, and it actually put me in those positions to have those conversations in the first place. And, um, and now I can move forward with any type of positive change that I really want to, as I would tell any entrepreneur, whether or not that's you know a, a small business helping education vying for different types of policies what whatever it might be so as long as we're having this com these conversations that's the first step okay so those are your dreams for the future i guess mm -hmm. is that the mm -hmm. right way to am I, am I, am yeah I for, the, for the current for the current and the future because i feel like there's other things that we're also not talking about you know like um mental health issues um, even like invisible disabilities, that's something that also needs to be brought to the forefront so that people are just more uh, comfortable talking about it. And, you know, the more exposure there is, the easier it is to actually delve into it and um, get the help that we need to make these type of changes. Because some people might be thinking about it, but they don't know what to do. And so I, and, and the picture I'm getting is that is that you want to be vocal. You want to be a spokesperson. You want to be out there talking and getting the word out about issues that you feel are important. Is, is that is that the I, right way? Th that's that's one thing for sure. And I, I I just want to help people maximize their potential as well. So I definitely still want to help in the entrepreneurship realm. And um, yeah, I I don't mind being that person to say something. You know, there's a, a purpose to the Portuguese, as a, as what I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right. Now, um, let, you know, we've been going through this COVID pandemic for the past couple of years. And, yeah. uh, but I, I hear in you optimism, I think, I mean, I mean mm -hmm. you seem to be hopeful and, uh, you know, what keeps you going and provides you with that hope and optimism for the future? Yeah, you know, so what you're saying, actually, I wanted to, you kind of read my mind about not only being a spokesperson for these issues, but also just somebody who motivates people and tells people that they can keep going. And so people do often ask me, like, how do I keep motivated for like this long of time? And I honestly, one, I choose to be happy. I want to be happy. So I actively seek being happy. What that means is uh, this past July, I actually started going to um, therapy and now I have a standing appointment every Thursday with a holistic therapist. And I've been asked multiple times by a lot of people, like, what are the benefits? Why do you do that? You seem more on the happy-go-lucky side anyway. And I say, <laughs> well, you know, JJ Watt is in tip top shape, but JJ Watt still has a, a trainer how many times a day. So if he needs somebody to help upkeep his, you know, top shape form, even the happiest person would need, a, I call it a, a happiness trainer you know, we should rebrand it, you know, to keep it up there. Um, other things that I do is I try not, if I'm watching on Netflix, I'm going to watch something more on the optimistic side and not, not something that'll bring me down. Same thing with music. Um, great conversations that I have with people or just words of encouragement. I screenshot those on my phone and I save it into an album on my phone called Self Talk. That way, whenever I'm feeling some sort of low or down, I can refer to it and be like, oh, oh, that's right. Okay, I got it. Oh, this person believes in me. Okay, awesome. It's really easy because we're right on our phone all the time, you know? And um, I think 
because I'm a habitual list maker, I also have lists of what will make me happy for every situation. So I'm, I'm going to be prepping for the bar soon. So I have a list of what I can look forward to while I'm prepping for the bar so that it's not completely a miserable, you know, time. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And, and so that, that's a very nice philosophy. And, and I, I guess that you're, you're going to also talk about your philosophy going forward about, you know, look on happiness, try to find things that uplift. Yeah, right. And that's part of your part of your message also, right? Right. Yeah. And why not? Why, why not? Because if, if we, if we do that and we take pride in doing that and we really uh, try hard with that, then this place is a better place for all of us to live in. You know, then when you go through the drive through at McDonald's, you will get a, a hello or a goodbye. And, you know, if you see the elevator coming, they won't just try to close it. People are happier. They'll, they'll let you in. Come on. Oh, you're driving crazy, but it's okay. Come, come through. It's all right. You know, <laughs> Okay. Now, yeah. yeah one, one thing I notice you talk a lot about sports too. I, uh, I do. <laughs> how uh, how uh, are, are is sports something that is positive in your life? Oh, definitely. Um, that's actually how Robbie and I met it was all basketball. So uh, you know, sports says a lot of things for you. Um, it um, uh, motivates you to still perform at your best. You know, never underestimate the heart of a champion type of mentality. Um, but I also think that uh, sports uh, can lead down many paths, whether it's education, business, it ties communities uh, together. It, um, it, it has the power to affect change in a different way. And that's why my ultimate goal is bringing over um, a, a real solid pro sports team for us, because I think that would unify Hawaii in a different kind of way that we have the same pride. That's why I'm a huge Dubs fan is because when I'm in the Bay, I feel the electric energy you know, and so um, I, I would love that for like UH, but on another level for Hawaii. Okay, yeah, yeah. and, and um, uh, you know, especially, <laughs> you know, it's funny that uh, during these times, sports, I think, can bring people together. Yeah, that, that's interesting. Now, um, in the few minutes we have left, I, I want to ask you, I mean, has there been anyone or anything that has helped you become a doer, um, that, is, that has moved you from the dreamer stage into the doer stage? Is there anything in particular, or is there any inspiration? Who or what would that be? You know, I feel like inspiration comes daily. It, you, you never know how a single conversation or just a hello could make a, a difference in somebody's day. So I, I, try, to, I try to just... I think it's a combination of that and maybe it was my first startup when I when I saw what I was capable of and I could teach myself something, follow through on it. And um, I think there's just something to be said about someone who puts their uh, money where their mouth is, you know, like you, you, you can do it. And that's the main thing is I think people are. Um, immediately frozen because they're afraid of their own light and why not why not shine that is how I feel so I don't it wasn't necessarily a specific person or instance it's more so a culmination of wanting to get something done wanting to maximize my potential being consistently inspired by those around me wanting to do the same for them and why not if other people, I, my, one of the things my mom always said was, you know, you should never be jealous of a person because them succeeding only shows you that you can do it too. And so that's my thing. Like I'm showing you, it can be done. You show me it can be done. Let's go and do it. So, yeah. Okay. So actually your, your mom had some good words of advice for you. <laughs> oh yeah. Lots. <laughs> Definitely. You never know what war people are fighting. So I always give them the benefit of the doubt. So, you know, I always tell myself if there's a um, crazy person driving in front of me, I just got to tell myself it's because they got to go number three or something. And then, then it makes <laughs> my day a lot better. <laughs> hey, yeah. And we're all human. Uh, and right. maybe, um, we have to think about that a little bit more uh, and, and uh, give people a little more leeway and then more opportunities and keep talking. That's what I, that's mm -hmm. what I hear you saying. Uh, and yeah. That, Especially that in the legal field, you know, we're, 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 we're supposed to be advisors and counselors. So we have to be listeners in order to do that. 
Yes. So before we can talk, we need to listen. That's good advice. You got to hear what people are saying in order to act on it and help mm -hmm. them, right? Mm -hmm. Is that, that, what, is that what, what you're saying? 100%. We need to know the why and the how and listen to their story in order to know why people are the way they are and why, why they made the, the decisions that they've made. And if we're going to help them, we have to listen so that we can help them to their maximum. And, and you seem to have compassion for people too. Uh, you seem to be accepting. Is there something that gave you that compassion? Is there, is there some view of life that you feel made it so that you could feel that way towards others? Because not, not everybody does feel that way. <laughs> By the way, even some lawyers. <laughs> well, I probably would say it's my mom and my grandma, if anything, you know, you know, everybody is, is equal. You know, that's how I've been raised. You just really never know what someone is fighting at the current, current uh, circumstance. So everybody in my eyes is equal. I'm a big advocate for making everyone feel included because may maybe it's just as much as I feel like I've succeeded, I've also failed and been rejected just as much. And I would never want anyone to feel that way. Be and maybe that's why I push so hard for it because I know how it feels to be torn down and I wouldn't want anyone to feel that way. So appearances and are not always oh, what definitely. they appear to be. <laughs> mm. Oh, definitely, yeah. And that's why conversation is important. And also maybe that has why you like sports so much because I think that's true of sports too, especially you know, this last weekend where we uh, saw different things happen uh, mm -hmm. uh, with football teams. Right, uh, right. <laughs> but, hey, now, from my last question for you, uh, yeah. any thoughts about uh, the Super Bowl? <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, I actually don't have a lot of thoughts about the Super Bowl. I, I wish I knew more about football than it seems like I might know. Um, so uh, what about you? Do you have thoughts about it? <laughs> well, I guess, you know, we just have to wait and see. And, and it's kind of interesting, these two teams that are playing. Um, maybe they weren't always expected it to be these two. So right. maybe life, life is uh, like that, you know, uh, and, and you have to maybe, uh, uh, you know, talk to your teammates and uh, get them out there, pos thinking positive. And yep. maybe that's what will <laughs> happen. Now, any yeah. any. Any words of wisdom to conclude our, our discussion today? Any thoughts about where you're going from here and, and what, what you want to aspire to? Um, well, just uh, thoughts moving forward. Just, you know, um, I, I guess keep working hard. Know that you're not alone. A lot of people are struggling right now, whether or not they internalize it or, or broadcast it. Um, whatever it is that you seek to do is possible make a game plan, stick around people who do believe in you as well. And if you don't have that person, self-talk is key. And I, I know that for myself because I've been remote for almost two and a half years. Um, and I, I heavily rely on myself to remind myself. But if not, you know, tune into things like this. Everybody, everybody that you've had on your show is very positive and forward thinking and very curious. So know what is out there so that you can maintain that life and um, hit your goals and treat every day like it's the fourth quarter. So fourth quarter mentality. <laughs> okay, uh, well, good, good advice. Uh, and uh, Kelsey Jandok, thank you for being my guest today. Uh, thank you. I, 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 I look forward to where you're going, but you've also come a long way. And <laughs> you, you know, you've talked about dreaming and doing, and I, mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to your crossing the sea and doing more, becoming someone who fulfills their dreams. So thank aloha, you. thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. <laughs> All right, aloha.